like to take a moment to thank our valued sponsors. John Travis, a financial coach and certified kingdom advisor with Richard Young Associates, a registered investment advisor. We'd also like to thank Sense of Satisfaction by Cricket. And a special thanks goes to Paul H. Bush, the burning bush. Please note that the views and opinions expressed on this show may not necessarily be the views and opinions of our sponsors. And if you would like to sponsor, please reach out. We'd love to have you. It's time to hear the story, make the connection, learn the lesson, and gain the wisdom. Are you ready? Let's get charged and be changed. The Sister Speak Brother Break Show. Conversations on grace, healing, and deliverance. This is Marcy Bush. Come on, let's journey together. Hello, and thank you for joining us this week for the Sister Speak Brother Break Show. Um, I know I always say I have a special guest, but this one is one of my most favorite people in the world. And um, I am so glad that we are able to sit and have this conversation together. Um, We do a lot of talking, but I have found that there are some times when you're close to people, but you still don't know all of their story. And so um, I may even learn some new things today. I know in the past four or five years, um, I have learned more about her. And that special guest today is my niece, Rashika Bush. Hello, Sheikha. Hello, Auntie. (laughs) I am so glad that we get to sit and have this conversation. Um, And I mean it when I say you are one of my most favorite people in the world. Um, Grew up together. Of course, I'm Mm -hmm. older. Mm -hmm. But um, as the first grandchild, well, the first grandchild of that generation. Yes. Because there is one grandchild who's my age. (laughs) And then eight years later, you came along. Mm Yes. And so, um, always grew up around you, but in different houses. And so our experiences, though we share some experiences, Mm -hmm. um, the day to day life was very different. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I haven't told you all that Sheikha is, um, a servant leader in our community. Um, she is, she works at a local agency, um, with children. She has, <laughs> my pastor says, m- more degrees than the thermometer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she loves learning. Um, and she has just really um, put herself in the community and lots of different organizations. But I always believe that when you see someone who is so committed, she's one of the most loyal people I know. But when you see someone who's so committed, I believe that that commitment and that passion was birthed out of something. And so Mm -hmm. today we just kind of want to hear your story and find out what makes you tick Mm -hmm. and what fuels you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so tell us about little Rashika. (laughs) Little Rashika. um, Little Rashika uh, grew up in a very uh, turbulent home. Um, I had a father who was addicted to alcohol at the time Mm -hmm. um, and a mom who just was not ready to be a mom. Um, I knew they loved me, but they just were not ready to be parents. So Mm -hmm. there was a lot of arguing. There was a lot of fussing, a lot of fighting. Um, There were times of fun and there were times of love, but um, unfortunately those things are often overshadowed in my memories by all the turbulence that I had. And because of that, um, my maternal grandparents ended up raising me um I spent a lot of time I'm very I always say people I'm very blessed to have what I call deep roots Mm -hmm. meaning I grew up with both sets of my grandparents and actually knew three of my great grandmothers okay one of them helped raise me Mm -hmm. so a lot of people don't have that depth in those roots um so I'm very grateful for that Mm -hmm. but um my maternal grandparents um decided to raise me and my sister which I'm very grateful for because they'd raised all five of their children right um Actually, both of my parents are the middle children in both their families. My daddy was one of Mm -hmm. nine. My mom was one of five. Um, And so she took me and my sister in and and she raised us. Okay. So what are some of the 
memories what are some of the good memories mm -hmm. that you had mm -hmm. of your childhood yes so one of my favorites is um my dad you know uh, mom and dad, they do things differently. Mm -hmm. And so my dad was teaching me how to ride a bike. And mm -hmm. so his method was, I'm going to push you really fast <laughs> and you keep pedaling and you get it. Well, my mama got tired of watching me fall mm -hmm. and she started opening the door and started screaming at him because she wanted him to go alongside me and mm -hmm. hold me. His method was, she'll get it <laughs> if she start pedaling, it's going fast enough. So that's one of my favorite memories, even yes. though it was them fussing. Uh, one of my favorite memories of us um, as a family. Um, sometimes my mom would, we would all go out to the movies. This was um, when the uh, Regal 3 was downtown Aiken on Lawrence mm -hmm. Street and a Chinese restaurant was right across the way. Mm -hmm. So that was our routine. We would go get Chinese food, okay. walk over to the movies and go home. Um, so those are some of my favorite memories um, as a child. That's good. Yeah. One of my favorite memories is you getting booted out as the uh, only grandchild in <laughs> yes <laughs> in that generation <laughs> right and uh, yeah you saw was it Mama holding Tremaine yes yeah yes. And mm -hmm. it, it mm -hmm. traumatized you yeah and you said put him down Grandmama put him down yes 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 because <laughs> like, it was supposed to be me like you. I don't understand why they want these other people around y'all have me right yes mm -hmm. and so I remember a lot of times I know you said there was turbulence mm -hmm. and you you wouldn't always be with your parents mm -hmm. so i remember you being with us a lot mm -hmm. now yes. you would go back mm -hmm. go back but you might yes. be with us for a couple of days yes. until they kind of got it together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right ready yes. to come get yes. get and be parents mm -hmm. again yes um yep. and so i got mm -hmm. to spend a lot of time with you mm -hmm. and so i'm grateful that although you know sometimes it's the trouble that causes it yes. it helps other bonds mm -hmm. form mm -hmm. and so I was always glad when you were around. Yeah. My sister Big, you were her yes. first child. <laughs> yes, she was. My mom told me that actually <laughs> she didn't even get a chance to get my ears pierced. Mom Beck did. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, she did. Okay. Yes. My mom tells that story of how my aunt, she came and got me. It's all, you know, come get me as usual. Mm -hmm. And one time I came back and, and my ears were pierced. <laughs> and she was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But yes, yes. And my mom also told me memories of um, sometimes she would have to call and be like, okay, so can I get my, my, my daughter? She coming, she coming back. Cause just every, y'all just mm -hmm. love me and everybody yes. was loving on me, taking care of me. Yes. Um, but you know, she, and we lived right across the street. Right. So it was real yes. easy. Yes. <laughs> and so, I mean, but, but she loved that as well. She loved that. I had a unit that right. loved me, nurtured me and cared for me. So, yeah. Right. So as you were growing up, what are some of the more traumatic maybe, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. memories that, mm -hmm have been kind of forged in your yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah. So because my father was an alcoholic at the time, um, he would have seizures. And as a child, it was very traumatic to see a grown man drop and start seizing. Mm -hmm. That was that was really traumatic for me. And then, um, unfortunately, my grandfather that also helped raise me was an alcoholic. So I used to see him fall sometimes and have seizures. So just the addiction and the things that I saw as a child, those things are, are traumatized because you don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. You're thinking that this person might die. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it became a dysfunctional normal for me right. to see that. Right. Um, and I would immediately know what to do. And a child under the age of 12 should not automatically know what to do no. when someone is seizing. But it's something that unfortunately I got used to seeing because of the level of addiction in my okay. family. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I remember young Sheikha as, of course, everybody loved you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so sweet, just the mildest, easiest going. But I think there was also the tendency to draw back, mm -hmm. like because mm -hmm. you never knew mm -hmm. what was going to happen. Yeah. So I vividly remember one mm -hmm. time when there was a ruckus, a commotion, mm -hmm. and somehow it had made it across the street mm -hmm. to our house mm -hmm. and on the, on the carport. And um, I remember being in the house, but I didn't hear you come in the mm -hmm. house. I didn't even know you were there. Right. Yeah. And I remember walking around the corner and seeing you in the corner, mm -hmm. like just like yeah. not knowing mm -hmm. what was going to yes. happen. Yeah. And, um, 
that I've never been able mm -hmm. to shake that. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you were sweet, quiet, mm -hmm. but it was mm -hmm. like, I guess there was so much going on right. around you. Right, yes, yes. That you were quiet because yes. no more noise is needed. Yes, <laughs> yes. I knew to be quiet. Unfortunately, security and safety were not a part of how I grew up. I did, I did not grow up feeling that way. I always grew up feeling like I had to take care of mm -hmm. because, um, again, my mom was not ready to be a mom, but my dad was an alcoholic. So sometimes she would leave us home with him and I had to make sure that he was okay because he would be passed out drunk. Mm -hmm. So I would have to make sure my sister was okay, I was okay, and that just in case he started seizing, his head or his body was turned a certain way. So I grew up always having to take care of mm -hmm. or, or defend or even stand up for. Because even when I went to live with my grandparents who helped raise me, that situation was still turbulent. There was still a lot of yelling, a cussing. There was still a lot of addiction. So even then, mm -hmm. I did not feel the safety and the security because I always had to be on watch. Mm -hmm. I always had to be on standby just in case something happened. You know, I knew what to do. So, and then I also learned at an early age to be quiet and stay away. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, also as a child, I, I was made to keep a lot of secrets. Mm -hmm. I kept a lot of secrets as a kid. You shouldn't be a small kid holding secrets right. so I had aunt and uncle secrets I had mom and dad secrets mm -hmm. things that I saw that I never said right. and so I just knew you just you just hold things mm -hmm. and so that's how I grew up and how did all of that how did it turn we see mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. things turned out good because mm -hmm. Now you are anything but that little mm -hmm. quiet girl mm -hmm. in the dark in the corner. Yeah. Like that is not mm -hmm. who you are. And even as we've been sitting here talking, I've been trying to remember when this big laugh from mm -hmm. this jolly person, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when it came forth, because mm -hmm. it's almost like, and I have, I've been like, mm -hmm. but I remember her when she was little. Mm -hmm. When did this turn happen? Mm -hmm. So. Where do you, what are some of the other memories mm -hmm. that you have, mm -hmm. um, even whatever surfaces yeah. to your mind, what are some yeah. of the things that you remember? Yeah. So even in the dysfunction in the family that I grew up in, we were still a close unit growing mm -hmm. up. So we did a lot of things together. Mm -hmm. Like my grandmother's house was a place for all celebrations, mm -hmm. birthdays, graduations, Christmas, Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. 4th of July, whatever was a holiday or something mm -hmm. to be celebrated, it was celebrated at my grandmother's house. So mm -hmm. even in all the dysfunction, because all of our cookouts were in early because of a fight <laughs> or a cuss out. So, <laughs> <laughs> so everything went in early. However, it would start. Right. Um, but uh, we would always just have a good time being together, running around outside, um, playing in the trees. I grew up climbing trees, playing okay. in the woods because I grew up in the country. So even in all the dysfunction, um, we would still be able to have fun together. Um, mm -hmm. We used to go to the um, you go to uh, Hunting's Island in Beaufort okay. at least two or three times a summer. My grandfather really? always had Fleetwood Cadillacs. He always had these mm -hmm. big old cars, mm -hmm. and you know you can put Papa John. You can put yes, Papa. <laughs> you could put a whole bunch of stuff in the trunk. So my grandmother would cook a bunch of food, put it in the trunk, and we would go to the beach for okay. the day. So there were still even in all that dysfunction, mm -hmm. there were a lot of uh, really good memories yes. of things that we did together That's and. Good. Going to my paternal grandparents' house, it, it it always gave me an option of, oh, everybody doesn't live like this. Mm -hmm. Like, there are couples who don't cuss each other out. Mm -hmm. Like, there are couples who love each other and care for each other. And, like, and people get married. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, snap. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. it, it I literally lived in two completely different worlds mm -hmm. to the point um it was it was hard to hear growing up. I giggle about it now, mm -hmm. but they used to always tell me um, because I am a bush bush. My mm -hmm. mom was a bush and married a bush mm -hmm. that you belong with them other bushes. You don't belong with us because you okay. don't act like this. Because okay. I remember as a child always thinking these people crazy. <laughs> I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be like this growing up. Right. Crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but I used to always get picked at like you don't belong to us. You too soft. You cry. You too emotional. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also where I learned to start holding things mm -hmm. in because mm -hmm. it, I was picked at for being okay. emotional and mm -hmm. being that way. Um, even to the point where one time um, my mom told me she she looked at me and she was like, I ain't gonna never be able to leave your daddy because you look just like him. Mm -hmm. 
And that was just in a moment of pain. Right, 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 um, right. Because she used a light that I looked so much like mm -hmm. my dad. But that was something that she said one time that stuck with me. Mm -hmm. But I was also a daddy's girl. So I was always looking for my, even though my daddy wasn't always around, mm -hmm. I was looking for my daddy and mm -hmm. wanted to know if my daddy is okay. Mm -hmm. And I will say this, one thing I really appreciated about my grandparents that raised me my dad would always come around, mm -hmm. but if he was, if he happened to be drunk, my grandparents would still let him come. Mm -hmm. He just couldn't take us anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I always appreciated that yes. they never tried to keep right. us right. from our parents. Right. It's like whenever they showed up, mm -hmm. they let them parent. Mm -hmm. And whenever That's they good. weren't there, they just weren't there. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, real quick, one of my favorite memories is one Christmas, because I never really knew if I was going to get something from my parents or not. My grandparents didn't either. Mm -hmm. So they just always always just got stuff for us for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Well, one year my mama actually came through on her word. Mm -hmm. Me and my sister literally had two of everything. <laughs> Literally, we had two. Like I had wow. two ten speeds, two like we had okay. two of everything because she actually followed through that gotcha. year, <laughs> which was odd because mm -hmm. sometimes it would be like a week, two weeks later. Sometimes right. we would see her on holidays, sometimes right. not. But that's one of those <laughs> kind of dysfunctional, fun, funny memories. She mm -hmm. actually came through on her word, yes. and we ended yes. up with two of everything. Wow. <laughs> so when when you were younger. Um, how do you think, how was it at school? So mm -hmm. we know how it was in, well, and I will say too, mm -hmm. that our families were sort of, sort of intertwined. Yes, yes. Um, my when, grand, my, my granddaddy that raised me worked for my other granddaddy right. until he got his own shop. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then your parents went to school together. Mm -hmm. So yes. their siblings and like your mom's mm -hmm. siblings yeah. and my brother's. Um, and sisters, all of them went to mm -hmm. school together. They all knew each other. Mm -hmm. We lived, well, like I say, your mom and dad mm -hmm. lived across the street from yeah. us, which was probably no more than five to seven mm -hmm. minutes from right, your right. other grandmother. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it was nothing for your dad to come by when he left work yes. because mm -hmm. it was only like two minutes out yep. of the way. Exactly. Um, so it's good that we were all in the same city, mm -hmm. city, country, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. Um, but all in the same community mm -hmm. and able to go. And I, I think that probably played a big part in everybody being able to be mm -hmm. a part of one another's lives rather than being in another city. Right. People who have one parent here, another parent right. there. Yep. Right. Yeah. So um, what did she could look like in school? School was my saving grace. I think that's why I loved school so okay. much. Um, Miss Boyd. Yes. Oh, man, Miss Boyd. Yes, yes, yes. I used to love Miss Boyd. So, Miss Boyd, so I had issues um, with uh, reading. So, I used to be pulled out. I think it was my really? second grade. Yeah. And so, Miss yeah. Boyd was my reading tutor. Okay. And Miss Boyd, is, I think they call them kidney tables. So, we mm -hmm. were all sitting around the table. Um, and Miss Boyd would make all of us read separately. We had, so my, you know, phonetics, learn how to sound out words less so miss boyd was great like by the time i finished with her i was a great by the time i got third rate grade i was a great reader so mm -hmm. school was my saving grace i i loved to go to school as a matter of fact if i had have went to awards day in 12th grade i would have had perfect attendance for first through 12th grade wow. but i didn't go to awards day why being okay, stubborn that's, my that's, last name is bush yeah. so being stubborn mm -hmm. about Don't something <laughs> But so we will get to that because twelfth grade she could look a yeah. lot different yes. than five year old, yes. six year old, yes. seven year old she could. Yes. When do you think transitions started in how mm -hmm. you projected? Hmm, that's a good question. Probably that is a good question. I don't know. Because I'm trying to think of like different things that mm -hmm. might have happened in my life or, or what mm -hmm. might have went on. Um I know for me, middle school and high school was just a lot of fun. I, I was blessed to grow up with a core group of friends. It was four mm -hmm. of us girls. We were, we were literally friends from elementary school all the way through high school. And so the four of us were together all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I think that is, I think once I got to high school, 
I, because I love to read and I love books. I always have like my mom, again, even in the dysfunction, there was some form of function. Mm -hmm. um, and my mom always thought that education was important. So I used to have a bunch of those little Disney golden, I, mm -hmm. I guess they're like golden mm -hmm. books. So I used to have a bunch of those. The golden something books, mm -hmm. but like with the black and gold spine. Yeah, yeah. So I had a ton of those. Um, every time she thought or saw a book, she would get me a book. I always had workbooks to practice my sounds, my words, my reading, my comprehension skills. So she always had that kind of stuff around, around me. But, um, so I used to love to read. So by the time I got to high school, I started reading and I started reading about black history mm -hmm. and I was like, so why isn't this in a book? Mm -hmm. Why aren't they teaching us this? Mm -hmm. And I found an anger rising up in me right. because I would hear things um, about how my grandparents and my great grandparents grew up in the South in the segregated mm -hmm. South and the things they went through. Mm -hmm. And then I started reading these books and I was like, oh, this is not right. right. This is a problem. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. <laughs> I think a little more, more anger at, at, you know, like, what is this system that we're living in? And why is it this way? And why mm -hmm. isn't there better recognition of the accomplishments of black people and what we contributed to right. our community? And so <laughs> that that equated to like an anger in me for anybody that was not black because I'm right. like I'm not with this y'all need to figure out how to treat us better you know we go fight the power that's what we go do mm -hmm. um, and then I met Jesus <laughs> Thank you, Lord. He makes all yes, the difference. Yes. So then I met Jesus. Jesus was like, yes, I made all of you different, but you love, mm -hmm. you love your neighbor as you love yourself. So funny story from me. Yes. I was doing my, well, I think I had taken off a year from college um, or a semester from college and was doing long-term subbing at Silver Bluff mm -hmm. when you were a senior. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And um, I was right across the hall mm -hmm. from one of your teachers. I don't know if it was a computer class mm -hmm. or something. And I remember um, being—I <laughs> remember coming, being out there mm -hmm. in the hallway, and this little lady looked like she was about to melt down. Like there were tears in her mm -hmm. eyes, and she came across the hall and she said, "Miss Bush, can you talk to Rashika?" And I'm like, "Huh?" And she's like. Rashika just uh, you would cuss yeah. out the teacher. Oh no! Yeah. Oh the sweet teacher. She was sweet <laughs> oh my teacher. goodness! Oh goodness! And I said, <laughs> "Ma'am, I try to talk to her because she called on you right. to do something. Yeah. You said you weren't doing it. Yeah. Again, this is senior year. Yes. Yes. You yes. said you were not doing it. Yeah. And she was like, Shika, do number so yeah. and so.'" I'm not doing it. Yeah. No, and like you, and then you got the cussing. Right. Yeah. And oh, she goodness. cried. And she said, oh, Lord. Yeah. Mm. Can you talk to her? I she goes, so like, <laughs> I was like, Yes, ma'am. I will. I don't know where she get that from. She wasn't raised that way. <laughs> but that's when I yeah. began to know mm -hmm. that you had the issue with race for Right. Me. Yes, I did. Yes. Like, uh uh. That's then you right. ain't going to make me. Right. And yes. so. That same, so I wonder what, because it wasn't just the reading. Right. Because then if you did not go to your awards day. Right. Yes. It was rebelling. So they had a dress code for awards day. <laughs> and let me tell you, I had a teacher who offered to take me shopping so I would not miss because she knew I would have had perfect attendance for every single day I had been in, been yes. in school. And I told from, her. From kindergarten. Yes. To 12th grade. Yes. And um, and I was like, no, because and certainly you didn't tell us. Yeah, no, I did not. Because no. you would have. No, because I would have been made. To yes. <laughs> so yes. I didn't say anything. I just told a fib and I was like, I don't have to go to school today. And because I wasn't a liar, they was like, oh, OK. Right. <laughs> I was supposed to be to school. Oh, um, so but yeah, so they wanted us to wear a certain I think it was certain shoes. And I was like, I don't want those color shoes. And it's like, well, you can't walk if you don't have those. Okay. Oh gosh. So yeah, just being stubborn yes. and bullheaded. <laughs> but and so yeah, we'll have to at another time. We're gonna have to see. We're gonna have to see what created the bull. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Because I'm serious that yeah. from this quiet mm -hmm. right, to the rebel. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's why the teacher was. Because that wasn't that wasn't my norm. Right. That was not right. my norm. And exactly. so I had to do some process yeah. to figure out. You know, was it just that or was it something mm, else? It that, wasn't. I yeah. tell you, it wasn't just yeah. that. Yeah. It was not just the I have, reading. Yeah, I had to it sit wasn't. down and, and I feel like there were probably lots of things going on, mm -hmm. you know, because it's probably the reading plus 
some incidents that you may have had to move right. out, you know, right. you may, there are some things that are done covertly and some mm -hmm. that are done overtly right. and then you just get tired. Right. And then, like you say, if there was, because usually when a child grows up in that mm -hmm. type of dysfunction, mm -hmm. there is something, you know, it usually comes out sooner. Right. Yes. Yes. And so somewhere in mm -hmm. there and then maybe things with the friends and right. with, there's no telling. It's not. But so then you graduated mm -hmm. and were you always did you always know you wanted to go to college? Well, I knew I was going to go to tech school because I know my my um, my great grandmother was always on board with me going going to school, going to college. My grandparents were always on board with that. Um, and so I knew that was something that they wanted me to do. I actually always thought I was going to be a computer program, like from fifth grade on. I was like, that's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I got out of school and I went to Aiken Tech, I was about five or six classes from graduation. And it just, it was not clicking for me. Like the programming piece was not clicking. Mm -hmm. And I was doing the tutoring. I was doing the extra labs. I was spending time with my professors mm -hmm. and Actually, one of the ladies that in our program, she was not empathetic or sympathetic at all. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, everybody thought she was a witch. <laughs> Me, she was horrible. Mm -hmm. um, and she pulled me to the side one day. She said, she could, it's okay if this is not for you. Mm -hmm. And I could tell that, that she must have really saw me because I was trying like everything you're supposed to do. Like I would be in the lab seven to eight hours, like mm. trying to figure it out. Trying Thanks to work. so much for joining us today. If you've been blessed by today's show, feel free to let us know. And if you'd like to sow into this ministry, become a sponsor or contact us. You can reach us at 803-221. 0169 or you can email us at the SSBB show at gmail.com let's continue this journey to get any of our past episodes the pain that I've gone through I've been through lots <laughs> depression perversion low self-esteem rejection but I'm here and I'm loving life and I'm changed Forever. I'm trying to maim you to leave you like t physically and mentally I, maim you. He wanted your life. I don't think he so much wanted my life is that he wanted some results. He wanted me to stay in the earth and not be who I am now. He's where you start talking about it was your love walk. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we had an opportunity to not only share our experience but find out that there were so many women in the room who had similar experiences. What advice would you give to people who find themselves in the grips of grief right now? Um, the pain is inevitable, but the suffering is optional. You were still mm. sick, you still weren't well, but did something change for you when they gave it a name? Yes, because um, once they put a label on it, I felt like it was putting a label on me. Mm. Catch up on past shows on my YouTube channel at Marcy Bush, M-A-R-C-E-Y-B-U-S-H. And be sure to subscribe so you won't miss any future episodes.